We're going to do it, right? We're going to focus. Okay, let's start off to review. Of course, we've been practicing these three conversion factors. Of course. Of course. So what are they? Avogadro's number. What's Avogadro's number good for? What does it do for us? Molecules and atoms in anions in one mole. Now, it's the same substance, right? Yes. All right. Avogadro's number. Another one? Okay. Subscript. What's that subscript conversion factor doing for us? Okay. So, we're talking about subscript, right? The subscript. The element. The subscript of the element in what? In the compound, how much of the compound? One mole. One mole. Okay, so it's that many moles of the subscript that goes with the element, right? In one mole of the compound. Okay, that's two. What's that third one? Molar mass. Okay, we're doing molar mass. What's molar mass? What's that do for us? Grams in what? One mole, one mole of a something, right? Okay, now where are you going to get the numbers for molar mass? Periodic. periodic table. That's the only place we go, right? It's the periodic table for molar mass, not the other two. Periodic table. And that red number, what's that red number? Is that moles or, or what? Grams. Everybody know that red number is grams? Okay, the number underneath the symbol is the grams. The grams in what? One mole. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so everybody got that? Those are our three conversion factors, right? We've been using it, practicing, did lots of things with it. Woo, did combustion analysis with it. Woo, woo, all that fun stuff. Awesome. All right, well, we've talked about those balancing equations, haven't we? Yeah, you guys can balance equations? Yeah, you remember those five reaction types? Oh, uh, yeah, what were they? Combustion, decomposition, Ex combination, single displacement, exchange, or we could say it exchange, or double displacement, or another word is metathesis. That one has lots of names. Okay, so we have those, right? Now, given the reactants, you know the reaction type and what's going to happen, you should be able to write the products and then balance that. Okay, so we're all familiar with how to do that, right? Okay, so we're going to take that now, and we're going to talk about those balanced equations, and we're going to start off with um, a simple one. We'll talk about nitrogen and hydrogen. So nitrogen, N2 plus H2 will give us NH3. All right, now I have to balance it, right? Okay, so how am I going to balance this? Okay, 2, 2 goes where? Okay, so I got to put a two here. Why am I putting a two in front? Because I have two here, right? So I need to put a two in front. I'm not going to try and put a subscript to balance it, am I? No, right? And we call that number, we call that a coefficient, right? So if I say coefficient, it means the number in front. You put the number in front of the whole compound. You don't try to put the number in between any of these elements, right? Okay. Now that gives me, whoa, but that gives me how many hydrogens on this side now? Six. Oh, wow, I don't have six. Three. So I need a three in front of that. Okay, good. Yay, we can all balance. Awesome. All right. This is the Haber process. Okay, this is done by Fritz Haber. So we give it a name, we call it Haber, at process after Fritz Haber. Really useful, produces ammonia, ammonia to produce fertilizer, fertilizer to feed lots of people. Awesome. The origin of this is a little different story. Fritz Haber was... Um, really patriotic for his country, Germany, and this is World War I. Okay, so Germany is at war, right? And he just really believes in his country and what they're doing. And the, they need nitrogen compounds to continue making explosives, continue the war effort. Um, Allied forces knew that, so they blocked off the supply from Chile. So now Germany has no nitrogen compounds. They need to make explosives. So Fritz Haber comes up with this process. And now that he has we have come up with this process, they can continue making explosives and keep going on. Um, that's where the controversy is. It's like, well, you know, as historians look back, they're like, well, if it wasn't for Fritz Haber making this 
reaction, then they would have ran out of explosives and saved many lives. But this process also came up for the Nobel Prize, which they did not want to give to him because of the reason why it was uh, 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 developed. But he did get the prize because it's a good piece of chemistry. Uh, the interesting thing about Fritz Haber, he's so patriotic for his country that he really wanted to explore other things like weapons of mass destruction. So he's one of the ones that came up with using chlorine gas on the troops. Yeah. Yeah, his his wife. Yeah, I know, I know. And his wife, she was not. He was not happy. She was not happy about the things that he was doing for the war effort. So while he went to the front to check on stuff, she committed suicide. So yeah, lots of things with this story. Um, and after all he'd done, from, believed in his country, and so very patriotic, he had to leave his country because, you know, the whole Jewish thing. He was Jewish. So yeah. <laughs> so that's an interesting story behind this process. But let's talk about those numbers, those coefficients. Now, there's nothing here. So we all understand that to be a one. Perfect. All right, now, if I want to use up one, one, one what? What's that one mean? One, one and two, one what? What, what would I call that? What amount? One mole, one molecule, one what? One mole, one mole. Usually we think of it as moles, right? It can also mean one molecule. Like this could be three molecules of hydrogen. Or, just like the subscript, remember the subscript could mean either atoms or moles? These coefficient numbers can mean molecules, atoms, or it can mean moles. Now, because a lot of our conversion factors work with moles, then... We're going to call this, uh, we're going to use this as moles. Are we okay with that? So if I say three, three what? Three moles, three moles of hydrogen. And this one is two, two moles of ammonia. All right, so if I had three moles of hydrogen that I re I'm using up and reacting, how many moles of ammonia am I going to get if I use up all three moles of hydrogen? Two moles of ammonia. That's what I'm going to get. Am I going to get seven moles of ammonia? No, not possible. If I am using up three moles of hydrogen, I will get two moles of ammonia. Not three moles, not four moles, not seven moles, only two moles. It's very much a direct relationship, isn't it? <laughs> ah, how about that? Yeah, okay. Well, if I want to react three moles of hydrogen, how many moles of ammonia is that going to take? I, I'm sorry, moles of nitrogen is that going to take? One. I need one complete mole of nitrogen. Is half a mole of nitrogen going to work for me? No. If I want to use up three moles of hydrogen, I better, need, I better have one mole of nitrogen. Oh, so it's kind of a relationship, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's a direct relationship. That's right. So I can do a lot of these relationships. I can say, hey, if I'm going to make two moles of ammonia, how many moles of nitrogen am I going to have to have? One. Does everybody see that? I'm going to need one mole of nitrogen. Okay, so we can use any of these coefficients to compare back and forth. You do that all the time. These are stoichiometric questions we're asking ourselves. Hey, how much nitrogen am I going to need if I want two moles of ammonia? How much hydrogen am I going to need if I react one mole of a nitrogen? How many moles of hydrogen is that? Those are all stoichiometric calculations. So we're getting ready to do stoichiometry. You heard about stoichiometry, right? Yeah, was it fun? Yes, it's fun. So we're going to do stoichiometry, and that's what we're going to work on. Um, you do this all the time when you're cooking. Gosh, I have two boxes of brownies. How many eggs am I going to need to make the two boxes of brownies? Okay, that's kind of, you do this all the time. I'm going to double the recipe because I want twice as much. So how many, you know, cups of milk am I going to need? Those kinds of things, okay? So that's what, so you're used to that. So this is what we're going to do. So now we're going to think about it in terms of chemistry. So that's a very much a true and valid relationship. Oh, yay. So let's write, what's what we get to write with it? Conversion factors. Yes, you know that. All right, let's go. Let's say three moles of hydrogen 
is to what? One mole of nitrogen. Okay, give me another one. Three moles of hydrogen. Wait, how much ammonia? Two mole of ammonia. Okay, give me another one. One mole of nitrogen. Okay, so two moles of ammonia, or I heard hydrogen. So one mole of nitrogen is to three moles of hydrogen, and so on and so on, right? Wow, I can write a lot of these conversion factors, can't I? Yeah, any of those conversion factors I can use. All right, well, we got to give it a name. Well, let's see, what can we name it? Well, I'm using moles and moles. Yeah, the coefficients from the balanced reaction, but they're in moles and moles. So you know what? Let's call this mole to mole. All right, so this is our mole to mole ratio. Okay, so this is our fourth and final conversion factor, mole to mole ratio. Where does the mole to mole ratio come from? The coefficients. Coefficients of a balanced equation. So you've got to double check to make sure all your equations are balanced, right? Or you won't have the coefficients right. Okay, so you've got to balance it correctly to get those coefficients. So the multimole ratio comes from what again? Balanced equation, those coefficients, right? Okay, so we've got that. This is our multimole ratio. Now, I want you to be very careful and see how the multimole ratio compares to our subscript conversion factor. All right, so let's write this down. One mole of N2 is to two moles of ammonia. Okay, does everybody see this is our mole to mole ratio from the coefficients? All right, now let's do a subscript conversion factor. One mole of N is to one mole of NH3. Wow. Do you see any differences? Yeah, because what has always one mole of the compound in it? The subscript conversion factor always has one mole of the compound, doesn't it? Always. But what about the multimole ratio? Is it always going to be one or two? Could it be three? Could it be five? Could it be whatever the coefficients are, right? Okay, so this one is going to vary, varies. This one was the, mol the subscript is always one mole of the compound, always one mole of the compound. And you see the element? This is an element all by itself. It's not a diatomic. It's just an element. It's only a diatomic if it's by itself. So don't put a diatomic here because it's just N. So this one, though, look what we've got, N2, because that's what it is in the equation. So this is an element in a compound, but these can be whatever. just depends on the balanced equation. For example, um, three moles of hydrogen and one mole of nitrogen. Okay, This is not an element in a compound. It's just two whatever substances. So the multimole ratio is just whatever substances from the balanced equation. That is different from the subscript conversion factor, which is always element in a compound. So another subscript conversion factor would be three moles of hydrogen is to one mole of NH3. That's a subscript conversion factor. Do you see that? Yeah. Again, you have to be very careful because it looks similar to the three moles of H2 is to two moles of NH3. Wow, similar but different. Remember the subscript is always one mole of the compound. And we're talking about a single element in that compound. Here, you know, it's just whatever the balanced equation is. Does everybody see the difference? Don't mix them up. Now, I know they're both in moles, but this one this came from the subscript, so we're going to call that subscript conversion factor. And the other one we're going to call multimole ratio. Okay? Yes? We're good? All right, well, let's see. What could we do with that mole-to-mole -mole ratio? Mm, well, let's think of some problems to do with it. Let's say I have four moles of, four moles of nitrogen. Okay, and I want to see, wow, 
If I have four moles of nitrogen that I want to use up, four moles of nitrogen, how many moles of hydrogen do I need? Moles of hydrogen. So when you're looking at that, you have to think of a valid relationship between the nitrogen and the hydrogen. And the only way we're going to do that is that we're going to use the coefficients, right? Molar mass is not going to work for us. Avogadro's number is going to work for us. Subscript is not going to work here either. There's only one, and that's going to be the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So we would set that up. If I've got moles of N2 on top, guess what I have to put on the bottom? Mole of N2. And we put what we want. What are we looking for here? Mole of hydrogen. Okay, now where am I going to get the numbers from? The equation, right? So does everybody see where we got those numbers? Okay, where's the number from H2 going to be? Three. Three. What's the number for N2 going to be? One. One. So my answer is 12 moles of N2. Um, uh, H2, yeah, sorry. Does that make sense? See? Okay, that's all there is to it. Well, let's go again. Let's say I have three moles of hydrogen that I want to use up. And let's just say, oh, let's just make that six. Let's make that six moles of hydrogen. Six moles of hydrogen that I want to use up, and I want to know, hey, how many moles of ammonia am I going to produce? Now, you could do that in your head, I'm sure, but let's use dimensional analysis. Figure it out that way. All right. Well, you know what happens. I've got moles, the words. I always do the words first. Don't copy the six moles. No, you just copy the words. Okay, the words are canceling out, not the number. So I've got these words, moles of H2. I'm going to change out the units. So what has to go on the bottom? Mole H2. And what did we say we wanted? Mole ammonia. So when you copy this down, you're just matching the units. You're canceling the units, not the number. See, the units cancel out, not the number. All right, so give me the numbers. Where am I getting the numbers from? What's going to be for H2? It's going to be 3. And what about NH3? 2. Does everybody see that? Okay, so then, of course, we know what the answer is going to be, right? Four. Mm -hmm. So you see how we're working with the multimole -mole conversion factor, right? Now, don't mix it up with the subscript. Remember how we went over that? Okay, they're different. All right, makes sense, right? Okay, awesome. We can do that. Well, let's see. Let's just say uh, instead of mol starting with moles of hydrogen, let's say I start with grams. Let's start with grams of hydrogen. Hmm. Grams of hydrogen. And I still want to know how many moles of ammonia. Wow. Let's say I'm going to start with 12 grams of hydrogen, and I still want to know moles of ammonia. Well, what am I going to do? Because if I want to use my mole-to-mole -mole ratio, that's not moles. Ah, this is, this is what? What units? What is this? Molar mass. This is grams, isn't it? So you know what to do with grams, right? Grams, what conversion factor are we using? Molar mass. Okay, so let's do molar mass. All right, if I've got grams of H2 on top, guess what goes on the bottom? Grams of H2, and we're, and we're converting it, changing it to mole of H2. Now, you know where the numbers come from this, right? From the periodic table, I mean, from the periodic table, right? Okay, so what are my numbers here? Okay, so where's the one go? One mole of H2. It's always the grams in one mole. Now, what are my grams? Two, two right? It's H2, so it's two grams. All right, now my grams cancel, and I've got moles of H2 on top. Guess what goes on the bottom? Mole of H2. What do we want? Mole of ammonia. So what am I going to put for my numbers there? Two of ammonia, right? And three for the hydrogen. Yep, and that's what we have. And so our answer comes out to be what? Four. Four moles of ammonia. Because usually in the lab, we're working with grams because we have the balances in grams. So a lot of times we'll start with grams. So if that's the case, great. You've got to convert that to moles, and you know how to do that. 
All right, wonderful. Well, let's say that, you know, I don't really want the answer in moles. I want the answer in grams. Now what would I do? Instead of moles of ammonia, I want grams of ammonia. So now what? So I'm going to do molar mass again, right? Okay, so moles of hydrogen canceled. If I've got moles of ammonia up top, what goes on the bottom? Moles of ammonia, and I'm changing it to grams of ammonia. So what are my numbers going to be? One mole. It's always one. So in this case, the one has to go on the bottom. Over here, one mole went on top. That's fine. Units have to cancel. One mole of ammonia goes on the bottom. Now, what are all the numbers that add that up? What is it? 14, 15, 16, 17? Okay. There we go. And my answer is what? 68 grams of ammonia. All right. See how we did that? Okay. Well, that's what we do a lot with stoichiometry. That's what we're going to do with stoichiometry. And when we do a stoichiometry, I want you to think about stoichiometry in terms of an hourglass. Okay, why is it like an hourglass? Not that it takes a lot of time to do, right? I know that's what you're thinking. Well, it takes so much time to do these. But it's an hourglass because it's very wide at the top. Very wide at the top. That's like, think of it as three steps. Wide at the top, that's one. Narrow in the middle, that's two. Back wide, that's three. Okay, so let's put that up here. All right, so here's our hourglass. All right, it's really wide at the top. Why is it wide? Because, wow, well, we can capture lots of things of all kinds of units. Well, we talked about grams. We've talked about atoms or molecules, right? We've talked about that. Okay, but whatever it is for stoichiometry, this top half is what you're given. That's what you're starting with. Like we started with the 12 grams of hydrogen. That's what I'm starting with. So this is wide because that's what we're starting with. We start lots of things. But what did we have to do to change it to what we want? This is what you want down here. Given is at the top, what you want is at the bottom. Now, we started with grams, and we had to convert that to what? What did we have to change that to? Moles, right? Didn't we change it to moles? Okay, so I'm going to put moles right here. We changed grams to moles. And then after we changed grams to moles of the given, how do we change moles of what we're given, which is hydrogen, into moles of what we want, which is ammonia? How do we change, how do we make that conversion? What did we use? What did we, what do we call this? Mole to mole ratio. That's what we used. Okay, so right there is a narrow section. There's only one thing you can do. One thing. Right here. And that is mole to mole ratio. There's only one way through there, mole to mole ratio. And when you do that, you come back out as moles of what you want. We had moles of ammonia. Great. Now the third and final step is you go to what the problem is asking for. Maybe the problem wants grams. Well, you know how to go from moles to grams, right? What are we using? Periodic table and molar mass, right? What if you want grams to atoms? Could you do that? I mean, moles to atoms. Could you do moles to atoms? Yes. Yeah, what are you going to use? Avogadro. Avogadro, absolutely. So this is stoichiometry. So we think of it as three steps. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three steps. Wide, lots of different units. Convert all those units to what? Mm, which is? moles, then we do the mole to mole ratio, and then whatever you want, the problem wants, right? Okay, so one, two, three. All the units convert to what again? Moles. And then we do mole to mole, and then whatever the problem is asking for. Great. Well, pretty soon, we're going to add stuff like, hey, gas laws. PV equals NRT. Fine. We're going to convert that to moles. And you know what? We're going to talk about molarity in liters. Fine. We still convert that to moles. We can have lots of different things up here, and we will. But it's always the same. All those different units, wide, lots of options, great. Get it to moles.
Then you do the mole to mole ratio, no other choice here. And then back out, maybe we want molarity, maybe we want liters, maybe we want pressure, maybe we want volume or mass or let's see, gas laws, PV equals NRT. Talking about temperature, lots of different things, but that's okay. We just convert to whatever the problem wants. Make sense? See how easy that is? One, two, three, whoa, we're done. All right, super, super easy. Okay, let's take a look at some of these and think about our um, stoichiometry. So let's look at this problem. How many grams of CH4, that's methane, how many grams of CH4 are required to react with 27.5 moles of oxygen? So what are you starting with? Okay, so first off, what am I starting with? Oxygen, moles of oxygen, right? Okay, so up here is going to be the oxygen, and what do you want? Grams of what? Methane, right? Okay, so I'm going to put grams of methane down here. All right, so whatever we're starting with, you've got to get that to moles. Well, hey, look, we're already starting with moles. Yay, does that make it easy for us? Awesome. So let's start with the 27.5 moles of oxygen. Now, what are we supposed to do if we're already converted to moles? Yay, then what do we have to do? You have to do mole to mole ratio. Okay, let's make sure our units cancel always. I've got moles of O2 on top. What words do I have to put on the bottom? Moles of O2. Great. And then what goes on top is what we want. We said we want a methane, so it's moles of methane. Great. Now, wow, where, what am I going to put for these numbers? Two moles of oxygen. Where'd you get the two moles of oxygen? Okay, and then what? One mole of CH4. Okay, now my units cancel. Are my units canceling here? Yes. All right, good. I've got the right ones. I'm dividing by two, not multiplying by two. Great, but that's not what the problem wanted. The problem wanted grams. So do you know how to go from moles of methane to grams? Sure we do. We're going to use molar mass. So moles of methane has to go on the bottom so my units will cancel. And I look up on the periodic table to get the grams of methane. What is that? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 grams. Perfect. All right, do you see how we did that? Make sense? Okay, so what does that come out to be? What, 200, 220 grams of methane. Okay, so right here, there it is, our mole-to-mole -mole ratio, right there. You have to have a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. This was a mole-to-mole -mole ratio, and then we convert back out to what the problem wants. Yeah, mole mass. Okay, are we good? All right, questions? We can do that one, right? Super easy, yeah? Okay, mm, let's do this one. How many moles of water are produced with 49.5 grams of sodium sulfate? Oh, yeah, there's that naming thing again. Well, you have to pick which one is sodium sulfate, right? Na2SO4. Oh, good. We know that. Yay. Okay, naming is going to be in here all over the place. All right, so you know which one you're talking about. Okay, so what am I starting with? And what's, what's my given? in grams of Na2SO4. Okay, so I'm going to write Na2SO4 up here. And what do you want to have? Moles of water. Okay, I'm going to write moles of water here. All right, you know our steps. We are starting with grams of Na2SO4. That's not the moles, so what does we have to do? We have to change the what? The grams to moles, always, right? Change it to moles. Okay, here we go. Let's change it to moles. Uh, we know how to do that. That's going to be molar mass. So let's put that up here. 49.5 grams of Na2SO4. I'm going to use molar mass to convert that. So I'm going to put the grams of Na2SO4 on the bottom. Make sure your units cancel. And the one mole of Na2SO4 on top. It's always grams in one mole. I go to the periodic table, I add all those up. It's what, 142.1 grams of Na2SO4? 
to one mole of sodium sulfate. Then, after I change it to moles, what's my next step I have to do? Mole to mole ratio. So let's do that. Let's see. Moles of Na2SO4 on top. You know what has to go on the bottom. Moles of Na2SO4. And what am I looking for? Moles of what? Because it's my mole to mole ratio. This is moles of water. Now, what are those numbers? Okay, two. We see that from the coefficient. And one mole of sodium sulfate. Everybody see that from the coefficient? Yeah, Na2SO4. Okay, now my unit's canceling over here. Yeah, they are canceling, so I'm going in the right direction. And what does the problem want? Do I need to change it to grams or molecules, or can I leave it as moles? I can leave it as moles? Okay, good, then I'm done. 0. 0.697 moles of water. There you go. All right, you see how we're doing it? Yeah, look for the given. Look for what you want. And then you know the three steps to get there. One, two, three. Yeah? Okay, awesome. Here's another one. Let's see if you can do this one. All right, see if you can do that. No problem, huh? Piece of cake, right? All right. 
Okay, so if you think you got it, turn around and check with your neighbor to see if you got the same answer. And watch your setup and check your sig figs. Yeah, it's always those sig fig things. Yes. Okay, check the sig figs as well every time you write down the number. Okay, turn around, check with somebody, see if you got the problem right. Elvish, there you go. Okay, explain it to somebody, or if you're not sure and you don't understand it, find somebody to explain it to you. Sarah, are you getting it okay? Yeah? Okay, watch your sig figs also. Double check the sig figs. Okay, explain it to somebody. Good, awesome. You explaining that? Working with Tracy on that one? Rashawn, how's it going? I was going to say, where's your paper? <laughs> oh, you're done. I was like, oh, I got it. Okay. Might want to get over there and see if Sarah has a question about it. You doing okay, son? All right. He's got your paper? Okay. Explain it to them over there. <laughs> yes, it is. Anna, Anna, what's going on? I will finish it today because I was working the weekend and I didn't have time. To oh, yeah. But I will finish it. Okay, you have to work extra hard, extra fast. Your chemistry time is going to be mushroom. You're going to have to set aside a lot of time for chemistry. Yeah. Okay. Are you catching what we're doing? I will by tomorrow. <laughs> I have off tomorrow, so I'll do it all. My homework. <laughs> Remember, chemistry works well if you do repetitive and not just like a one yeah. lump. Well, I'll work it out. And okay. Has okay. Before, so. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> but you got to practice it like regularly. You got to fire those neurons. If you just do it one time, one shot, it won't stick. Yeah, it won't stick. Okay, all right. Christina, how you doing? Got it? Yeah. All right, good. All right, awesome. How are you doing? Okay, did he explain it to you? Yeah. All right. All right, good job. Maria, how are you doing? Good? Okay. Bryn, this should be like a piece of cake yep, for you. Old hat, been here, done that. <laughs> That's okay, turn around and make sure everybody else gets it for you, right? Explain it to everybody else around you. All right, how are we doing back here? Mmm, 391. This is more mass right here is off. Did you did one sulfur? Yes. And how many fluorines? Six. Mm -hmm. You came with 146, yeah? No, I might have a, let me see. I think I know one sulfur, that. six fluorines, yeah? Should be 146. Your setup is right. Everything looks good. Molar mass is off. Okay. All right, so what'd you guys get for the answer? Did everybody get 391? Yay! All right, if you did not get 391, check with somebody who did. Explain it. You getting it okay? I, I set it up right. I just get the adding. No. Oh. <laughs> adding up those lawyers. <laughs> yes, very true. Don't forget this husband. The non science.
Yeah. You did good, Jeff. Wow. This is the big new thing. Empirical formula. Okay. <laughs> Can we just please not have Bill Graham ever again? Yeah. Too many numbers. Yeah. All right. Alina, okay? Doing okay? Yeah? All right. Tracy, how's it doing? You get it? Yeah. Everybody explain it? Yeah. Get some help? All right, awesome. Awesome. Okay, how are we doing back here? You guys got it okay? Yeah, how are you doing okay? Got it? Okay. All right, Sarah, you doing good? Did you get it? 391? Yeah, 391, right? You know how to do it? You got it? Okay. Okay. Woo! Yeah. All right. All right, looks like we got it. Yes? yes. Yay, everybody got 391. Woo woo. Okay, awesome. Everybody got it, right? Okay. Shoo. So, can we do can we do stoichiometry? Yes. yes, we can. Remember the one, two, three steps, right? Is that so easy? That's so easy, wasn't it? Then we got so got that down. Awesome. Okay, well now that we can Okay, how about we do how about we do one more real quick? Just to make sure you can do it. And then once you get this down, we're gonna add to our stoichiometry. Yeah, let's do some things with it. All right. All right, so just double check, make sure you can do this one. This one's easy. You only have to go to moles of hydrogen. We're starting with 71.4 grams of ammonia. You know what to do with grams. Have to use that molar mass again. You can use 17.0 grams for our molar mass of ammonia. Now, after you convert it to grams and molar mass, then you're doing that good old mole to mole, right? Okay, so it should be about there. Looks like a lot of us are already there. Awesome. So, what did you get for your answer? 6.3 moles of hydrogen. Okay, 6.3 moles of hydrogen. 
Whew, we got that, right? You did the molar mass, then you did a mole to mole ratio, and then that was it, right? There was your answer. Okay, 6.3 moles of hydrogen. All right, are we okay? Does everybody got that? All right, woo, yay! Okay.